Oh, hey guys. Welcome to another episode of Crazy D's Equipment. Just picking up some things here. Hey, so today I want to show you something new that came into the shop. Um, last week I bought an entire collection of uh, farm all tractors from a gentleman down by Kingman. He uh, unfortunately passed away suddenly and the wife was getting ready to sell the ground and or to rent the ground out and stuff and she wanted to get rid of or find a home for the collection and we went down there and we looked at the entire collection and uh, me and Dan Phil felt that it was worth our purchase so but I want to share with you guys the first the first item that we're going to get running and get out on the lot and I think you all going to get a kick out of it she, it's it's pretty neat so but anyways guys well, let Miguel get go get the dock and we'll bring it in here and show you This is the little beauty that we dragged home and the first one out of the collection to to meet the dock. Uh, it's a little 1950 farm all cub with a uh, belly mower. Uh, it's, it's I don't know what brand of belly, mo belly mower it is but it's got a little belly mower on it. Now also, and we haven't got it home yet, it has a sickle mower and it has a one bottom plow to go on it. So a little history on these uh, on these farmall cubs. So farmall cub, they started building them in 47 and they built them all the way to 1981. They're the longest running series of tractor. Now they changed a lot in that time and they and they changed the way that they were sold and the way they were marketed but basically they were the same tractor from from day one to to the end. Um, they also made another little a model of this called the cub low boy or the low boy cub and it's shorter to the ground and a lot of those you find with the belly mower. In uh, 1960 they quit painting them red with the farm all, the farm all red and stuff. They started painting them yellow and white just like the Cub Cadet tractors and they were just called Cubs. Now they were these were both sold um, you know how some some uh, hardware stores and stuff would sell Cub Cadet tractors but not full farm alls or full international size tractors and they actually would sell the cub and those those came in the standard cub like this and then they started making a uh, I think in like um, uh, 69 they started making the 154 cub and then they started to make a 184 and then you got a 185 cub and they are the pretty much the same tractor the only difference is that they um, that they have a they have a flat grill uh, there's a yellow and white they either come in a low boy model all those came in pretty much a low boy model or you had the standard cub like this um, these were originally were advertised to the farmer as uh, auxiliary power for the farm and they were designed for uh, bigger farms to use for pulling trailers around or they had a little belt pulley thing on the back where you could run a feed grinder or um, do that kind of stuff. Um, now me and Danny started, me and the doc started working on this one here and we've come into a few things that this one's going to need. So what, what do we got to do to this Dan? Let them, let them know what, what this project contains for them for the future. Um, this one has quite a bit of few little major problems actually. A few major problems? <laughs> yeah. I got it, the ring gear on the flywheel is all chewed up. I got to get the carburetor cleaned up better than I think I, I did. So, and other than that, it wants to start. It's got good spark. Yeah. You, were, you were lighting that little uh, spark tester up like a Christmas tree. And I know earlier when you were trying to start it, Started, it was just going boom, boom, boom. wasn't at all grabbing yeah, that it, flywheel it wasn't touching nothing in there well this one here was a later restoration and the guy that had you know he restored several of his tractors and I think he used this one 
as kind of his lawn and garden tractor. And you know, that steering wheel is definitely one, an aftermarket after a car and stuff, but it's got good rubber on the back, it's got decent rubber on the front, it's got one new one here and that one needs to be replaced. The lights and stuff is working and stuff. The really great thing about these things is that that little motor on these things are, it's, in, it's almost indestructible. It's a little four cylinder, it's called an L head. It's uh, got, it's got 1600 RPM, so it gives you about 15 horses, to 10 to 15 horses in that area. Um, the bore is two, is a two over two five eighths, and uh, the stroke is just a little bit. I think it's like two two and a fourth or something like that on the stroke. So it's yeah. a, they're good little motors. Um, they're really they're really just solid little tractors. Now, kind of the cool thing, and we had a fixed one that we had in the past before. That transmission back there is the same tranny that's used in the new, in the 60 model Cub Cadet garden tractors and I have swapped them out. We did that on, the, on one Cub we had a long time ago where the tranny, the tractor was great but the guy had tried to do more than the, tr than the tractor could handle and uh, he totally destroyed the transmission and he was, so we bought it really cheap from him and we had an old Cub Cadet in the back and Dan yanked the tranny out of it, popped it in here, and it was up and going again and was able to, to resell it. So the, the, these things here, the resale price on these, talking about reselling them, the resale price on these things, they're going to range non-running um, and rough condition. You're going to be in the five to eight hundred dollar range on one of these. Um, in good running condition, you're going to be in the 15 to 2,000, and if they're all painted up and restored with good rubber and stuff on them, you're in the 25 to 3,000 dollar range on these. What these things will bring, um, I have seen them bring more. I've seen them bring a lot less, but it's just like any old tractor or any used tractor. It's going to be. It's really going to be on who's there to buy. If you're in an auction situation, or what you're willing to, to pay the seller to buy it. Um, but you know, a lot of these come up to this part of to this part of the country. They didn't sell a lot here in the Great Plains uh, of these. Most of these have found their way into the middle of the country here, coming up out of the south. Um, a lot of these cubs and have come up that way, and, and C A Alice's and B Alice's have come up that way. L A John Deere's and L John Deere's. And B and C internationals or farm malls have all come up that way, and I, you know, those these were ideal tractors for tobacco farming, and they weren't really useful out here in wheat country. Now, if you are wanting to start truck guarding, you want to start growing two, three, four acres of vegetables, and you're looking for a tractor that is ideal for that, find yourself one of these things. You can find the equipment to go on here, or it's not hard to modify the the lift that's on the back here that's for raising and lowering a collivator into a one-arm three-point lift, and you can get older equipment and use on here smaller older garden equipment, and you could, and I know a guy that has a uh, 10-acre garden, and this is what he uses. He's got, he's got a newer one of these from the 70s that, uh, that he he uses to do truck gardening, and I mean it just works like a top. And you know and this what it's made because you sit off on the side here, if you notice, and you have straight view here. And I on the bees when they first started doing that on the bees and the A farm malls, they called that coldo vision. So because you could look right down on the collivator and see where it was at. So that really. Uh, that gave you vision, and that's ideal when you're truck guarding because you, then you can get in there and you can cultivate that corn or tomatoes or beans or whatever when they're smaller plants and work them. And then it's ideal for pulling a trailer around when you do the harvest, and you can. It's not hard to plant your rows to where this fits up and downs the rows and stuff. So I know a lot of people that absolutely love these for doing that truck gardening and stuff. So, but kind of finishes up on, on this thing here. So. Um, this one's not really going to be one that you're gonna we're gonna follow like we did the uh, 
the the um, the 300 utility. Uh, Dan's going to work on this. I really need to get this one done and on the lot. And I don't really have time to. Well, wait before you do that, Dan. I want to film it. So Daniel Daniel's just going to kind of stay on this one solid and hard, and the doc's going to get it done and get it out on the lot. So um, talking about tractors that he's been working on solid and hard. An update on the John Deere is it runs. And now what? Hydraulic leaks everywhere. <laughs> it poured out hydraulic fluid out of the rear end from over with from the cylinder where the where the not cylinder but from the where the uh, the filter went in. It was pouring. It was pouring out from the brake. Yeah. Uh, uh, Couple other places, places yeah. Place, so. so, we I guess we kind of know why the uh, three point wasn't working. It probably didn't have any fluid to operate it because it poured out everywhere. So that one's going on. Um, we figured out on that eight in. We got. We think we can know what's wrong with that rear end, and the doc's back on that one. He's going to pull it apart and put. Uh, Replace the bow gears. We think we got cracked bow gear on the bow gears on the back. Yeah. So, but uh, we got we got a few projects going and stuff. So, but I think that you know I think that really kind of does it for the day, guys. So, hey, thank you guys for coming in. I know this was a little bit of a shorter video, and but we appreciate you guys coming in. We'll keep you updated on this thing and what's going on with it. If you liked it. If you like this kind of content guys please remember to subscribe if you haven't subscribed if you if you are it you know please if, if, if you don't want to miss a video make sure you hit that bell hit the little bell icon if you want to know what's on the lot right now go to Facebook go to ag go to Omega ag sales and you can find the site there please like that when you're there also if you just want to follow me and Dan and see what crazy tractors we're dragging home and what's going on the lot and what's we're up to you can go to crazy d uh, equipment on facebook and check that out there uh, if you just want to look at look at pictures of tractors you can now follow us on instagram i, I post a tractor picture there daily or two um our little videos of stuff that's going on first starts on some of these tractors and that kind of stuff i kind of post on there for, for you guys can see but otherwise guys Thank you guys for coming in, and I'm going to help Dan tinker on this one a little bit more. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you.